Hey guys. Okay, I'm starting off really quickly and I'm showing you a couple of different techniques to use with your Lindy's Magicals or any magical pow powder that you use. Now, if you put salt water in a spray bottle, you get your Lindy's Magicals will react a different way. So if you add normal water, it reacts. When you put the salt water down, it actually pushes the product away from the salt. So you can do a couple of different things. You can, so I've just spritzed my Vicky Booten's Foundations paper with the, which is a mixed media cardstock. I've spritzed that with the salt water spray. Now, all I did was just put some salt water, uh, some salt into a bottle and swelled it around. Can you see how it's pushing the product in a swirl pattern rather than allowing the product to blend together? It's this one. I kind of went a little bit too far with it, but I thought I'd record it anyway so you can see both angles of it. Do you know what I mean? Whether, whether you go full over the top with it or if you do a light spritz, you can sort of see. So up in the top left corner, I've put the spritz down and I've just added some product and just let it do its thing. Then down the very bottom right, you can see where it's pushing away. The blue is really good. at see The blue and the purple, it's really good to see them separate and it works really well. Now, I'm going to do another one. So I'm doing these and then I show you how I use it in a layout after this. So stick around because it does come together and it looks really cool. So I put my Lindy's Magicals into these little spray bottle, little fine liner bottles and it helps me get a smaller spritz out of it. So instead of getting a big dump of product, because these things are so insanely pigmented, you don't need to put too much product down. This is literally just a dusting. Can you see how cool that looks? Now I'm moving them out of the way and then I'm coming back in. So with this one, I decided because it looked a bit muddy, I thought I'd put some plastic down. Now you can use cling wrap or I just use some plastic bags that I had in my kitchen. I let them sit overnight and that's when the video will start. So I let them sit, I let them dry. I didn't dry them with a heat tool and this is the next morning. So this is where I let them sit with this product overnight. You can see that the product is still wet on, leaves a really cool effect with the plastic bag, but it was a bit muddy that one um, for me personally at that point. But I decided I'm going to challenge myself to use the muddy one. So you can see how much pigment and product is still left on it. So this is just a piece of normal cardstock. And I thought, you know what, I could probably use that as a backing page, you know, like maybe some different, just to sort of give me a different look. So I looked at all three. You can see them there. I kind of thought to myself, now, what am I going to do here? Am I going to try and revive this piece? Add a little bit more. What do I want to do? So I tried adding a little bit on top to see if it's going to, one, rejuvenate what's underneath it and leave a really cool pattern, or is it just going to be a complete loss? So I ended up with that cool pattern in the background. Now, what actually happened was with the Lindy's Magicals, they actually have a silver um, mica powder in them. And when I put the bag down, all the silver mica powder, because I was using salt water, it all wicked out and left a really cool pattern where the bag is. So when I was looking at this, I thought, what am I going to do? How am I going to go about this? And we've all done that, right? Am I? I'm not alone. We've all created things that we've sort of thought to ourselves, it looks amazing. This is going to be really fun. And you go to town, you create all these patterns, and then you think, now what am I going to do with it? So I decided that instead of using this one, which would be the obvious choice to go with, I thought I'm going to use this one to see if I can do something with it. I think I prefer the lines going up and down as opposed to across. So then I thought I'm just going to cut it up. So watch me go to town here. This is literally my brain in action. There is no um, rhyme nor reason to what I'm doing. I'm kind of using 
where the silver mica powder where it stops you can sort of see it there when it's hard to see on the camera even in real time it was a little bit hard so I used that as my guide to cut out a sort of a messy mixed media background now you've got to stick around to see what it looks like at the end because it just transforms it totally looks completely different and it looks so cool and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I will still use the other pages, don't worry. I will get to those. And for me now, that means I've got a mixed media page ready to go. So I will use them on another layout. And that's not a drama whatsoever. So here I'm just trying to... Now I'm cutting in a little bit more. I'm trying to remove some of that muddy area. You can see in the center there, obviously I'm putting a photo on it. So that would be the obvious place to put the photo to cover up the muddy bit. So this is, as I said at the beginning, this is the Vicky Booten Foundations Mixed Media cardstock. It is amazing. It is so good. You don't have to put gesso down. It's basically like a pre-prepped, uh, 12 by 12 mixed media cardstock. That is what it's for. You can get it in black and you can get it in white. It is amazing. And as you can see, it pops so much better on the black. So I just went, you know what? This is going to be a black background, which I haven't, I don't think I've done a black one for a while, to be honest. So I thought, you know what? Now, this is where you just let your imagination go. You sort of think to yourself, okay, it's just it's not a particular shape. It's not a diamond. It's not a square. It's not a blob. It's just a thing. It's just a mass of gorgeous color explosion in the middle of the page. The black is allowing it to pop off the page. And to be honest with you, I absolutely love how this layout comes out. Considering it was, a, you saw what I started with. It was just a big mess. That's basically what it was. So I'm using a photo of my two eldest girls and we were walking through the shops this particular day and if you're a parent even a grandparent you will probably know this feeling it sort of hit me wow Angela's grown up she's not a little girl anymore she's she's growing up wow you know it like, really hit me and I snapped the photo, which is a really bizarre thing to do in the middle of a shopping center. I understand this, but I wanted to scrap it. So that kind of photo to me lends itself to a mixed media layout because there's not really a subject other than they're growing up. So what I decided to do was sit down with my scissors and just cut out the extra bits that were from around the outside and just cut them in some different shapes just to add some extra elements so kind of ephemera if you will um that's kind of what they're replacing on the page and it's there's no waste then i'm literally using the whole thing but i'm drawing your eye to different sections of it and it just creates a different interest point on it so as you can see, it just looks different. You can still see that really grungy section in the center. And obviously that's where I'm gonna plop my photo. And these ones, I really like how this is, where this is going. I really do. Leave me a comment below. Is this something you would now consider trying? The, you know, the mica powders, the Lindy's Magicals. There's a stack of different ones. Nuvo do them as well. Um, I happened to buy these ones from Crazy Craft Obsession a while ago. They are, they're fantastic. I love them. I think in future I would purchase my um, magical powders in an individual color. Whereas this one, I got all the colors, which has been great because it's allowed me to play with all of them. But they probably aren't all in my color zone. There's a green one that's very... The yellow mixes with the blue and I get a green, and but there's a green one that's really overpowering. So, but we live and we learn, right? I love Lindy's Magicals. I love them. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely love them. I know there's other mica powders you can get. Now, I'm just gluing this straight down to the cardstock, okay? Don't mind me for putting my water bottle on top of there. I needed some weight on it because I'm using my, because it's 
a heavier cardstock going on a lighter cardstock. I just decided to glue it down, no problem, no harm, no foul, and just to glue it down without going ridiculous with all the glue because you don't need it. And now I'm just going to go around, once I've got the big splodge in the middle, that's what I'm calling it, it's like a galaxy, you could make that into a galaxy actually, quite easily to be honest, um, a big splodge, it could be a big paint splodge, it could be what it is now, just a mass of colour in the background. Um, you notice there I've stuck it down, I probably in hindsight could have gone slightly further to the right to cover up that dark bit a little bit more, but that's okay, we've still got title to go yet, so that's fine. I have no issue with this. I'm just gluing down these little bits. I just cut them in odd shapes, so nothing is, so anyone, this is my big thing. I wanna create layouts that I believe anyone could do. Anyone could recreate this. There is no right, there is no wrong. And with scrapbooking, that is the be all and end all. The only, the only thing that I do with my scrapbooking is the acid and lignin free thing, um, which was driven home to me big time when I first started. I still have that in the back of my mind. Yes, I use mixed media, but I always make sure that my photos are backed with something if I'm using mixed media. That's the only thing that I do. So the actual photo itself is not touching the mixed media. So you can see here, I ended up using the rest of, so I used that sheet that I just splodged onto. I used it for my backing cardstock. And then I ended up using that whole sheet because, to be honest, I probably would never have used it on anything else. So I used it to border my entire layout. And then I pulled out the Pinterest Studio Keep It Real Alphas. These ones I decided to use for a couple of reasons. One, the green went with the blue-green mix that I've got going on. That totally worked. And I wanted to... I want to use these up because the sticky sticks to the plastic, not to the alpha. <laughs> so I ended up creating a longer title than I probably needed to, but I thought this way I can create a bit of a layer, you know, a bit of a use up the bulk of these stickers because they're just unfortunately not working the best for me. I don't know if anyone else has had any issues with these particular ones, but they bugged me bad. So and they've been like this since the day I opened them, believe it or not. Now, sorry, I need a drink. So, uh, what else can I tell you? I'm just creating a little bit of an outside, sort of an offset, if you will. That's what I'm creating with the white cardstock. And it also helps me, when you're putting alphas of any description, whether you've cut them on your Cricut, whether you've cut them with your die cutting machine, whether you've used stickers, whether you've used thickers, I find when I'm putting them onto on top of mixed media, especially mica powder, um, if I put them on some cardstock first or create an offset with them, I'm able to get them to adhere better because then I can use my art glitter glue, which will adhere anything to anything. I'm positive of it. I'm yet to find something I can't adhere with mica powder. So, um... What else can I tell you? This weekend is crazy busy, absolutely crazy busy. I'm squeezing this voiceover in, in between football games, football training, and, sorry, AFL for my Aussies, uh, AFL girls, and we've got a game in an hour, not quite an hour, so Angela's already at training, and then we're off to a very late competition for... Jennifer, she's got her gymnastics comp today. She's really trying super hard to get a 34. By the time this video goes up, we will know whether she does or doesn't hit it today. Um, and yeah, she's really looking to try and get to States this year. She just wants to go to experience it. The only way you can go is if you hit a 34. So if she doesn't get it this year, she will definitely get it next year. But that's okay. Gymnastics is a very difficult sport and it's takes a lot of dedication and a lot of hard work. When you watch these girls on TV, you know, with the Olympic Games and all that sort of thing, you have no... I always knew, obviously, they worked hard. I had no concept 
no concept of how hard they have to work to be able to do a smidgen of what they do. So, yeah, we're going to go and we're going to give it a red hot shot and we'll see what we get with it. Now, I'm going around the outside edge of my, on the actual mixed media with my black Posca paint pen just to create a doodly line around the edges of it. And yes, this is sped up. I do not go that fast. I always get a question, how fast do you do this? This is sped up, guys. It is sped up because with my videos, if you're new to my channel, hi, how are you going? Leave me a like, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a, um, a comment. All of that helps my channel. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more. I do this full time. This is, I post six videos a week. So if you jump on board, you will get lots and lots of content. Now I went around the outside with, oh, sorry, the inside of the mixed media with black paint, Posca paint pen. Now I'm going around with my Uniball Signo Broad white pen. Now this pen, it's a pigment pen, so it's pigment ink and it sits on top of your cardstock. So you end up with a perfect brilliant white. Now, I don't get a perfect brilliant white all the way around because I was slipping a little bit and I was going into the mica powder, which of course then activated with the pigment ink. So there's a few bits and pieces, but you know what? They're the happy accidents that actually look really cool. So don't, don't sweat the small stuff. Now, I will be bringing you some cool content this week. I will be bringing you a lot more layouts. I did end up going over this here. I know I did it with the white paint Posca pen, but I ended up going over it with the Uniball Signo Broad because it's brighter and whiter. And that's what I thought would look really good on the layout. So if you like what you've seen here, the close-ups will be coming up very shortly. And um, what else did I do here? I was trying to do, some, oh, that's right. I tried really hard, my white Posca paint pen that I'm using, and I tried really hard not to open another one until that one's finished, the one I'm using's finished. So I try really hard not to do that, and I tried to get some white paint out of it, and it just wasn't happening for me. So that's okay. I just decided to just go around and just do some, to add some added interest to the page. It felt like it wasn't quite finished. So what I did is I actually went around and intentionally circled different blobs within my giant blob. And I think this actually makes it work really well. I could have got, I did think about going around these black bits and doing some gold in there as well. You could have done that, you could have done some silver. There is the mica powder there, so I actually didn't feel that I needed it, but now looking back at it, I probably, I think it'd be cool if I go back in and do a little bit of gold in and around there. I think that was awesome gold foil. <gasps> Maybe that's what I'll do with the next layout. Maybe some gold foil and some of these little bits and pieces. Apologies if you can hear that motorbike. It's my neighbor studying his bike up. It is Sunday, so you know, it's okay. Now, what am I doing? So I just go around and do this. And then, boom, bada, bing, just like that, the layout's done. What do you think, guys? Please leave me a comment. Let me know, is this something that you would give a try? Is this something that you would like to see more of? Things like this. I am getting back to my... I'm, I just, I want to get back to my roots and this is the sort of stuff that I love. So here up close, you can see how the salt water has pushed the ink away, the dye away from itself instead of sucking it in, it's pushed it out. And you can see with the back, black lines and the white lines, how it makes it pop. Thank you so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate each and every one of you. And if you want to help out my channel, just leave me a thumbs up, subscribe, view and leave me comment. It's all free. Thanks for that guys. I'll chat to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.